Kal Kadosh, Boker Or, Bekim Balachat, Day 59, page 181. We are on Halacha Kav Zayin, 27. There are several months in the Hebrew calendar that are 29 days long in some, day, some years and 30 days long in other years. One example of the month of Cheshvan. So if a boy was born on the 30th of Cheshvan, on the year that he becomes 13, that month only has 29 days. So he becomes Bar Mitzvah on Rosh Chodesh Kislev. Okay, makes sense or not? Meaning, the months usually, Shvat is always Maleh. Adar is usually chaser, other than if there's going to be Adar Bet, Adar Aleph, Adar Bet. So Adar Aleph is Maleh, Adar Bet is chaser. Okay, then you have Shvat and Adar, which are going to be Maleh, Maleh, and then chaser. And then again, Nisan is always Maleh. Iyar is always chaser. Sivan, always Maleh. Tammuz is always chaser. Av is always Maleh. Elul is always chaser. Tishri is always Maleh. And then you have Cheshvan and Kislev. So Cheshvan and Kislev, right? Cheshvan and Kislev, right? Is Cheshvan and Kislev is going to be the two months which they go around. So if he was born in Rosh Chodesh Kislev during a year that when Cheshvan was only 29 day, days long, and he becomes 13 in a year when the 30 days long, he becomes when it's on the 30th of Cheshvan, which is the day before Rosh Chodesh Kislev. Some poskim disagree with this ruling. Meaning there's a machlok and a poskim legabeze. Ata evanta? Odpa. Zodomeret. In a case where he was born on day 30, so that in the next 13 years, it's not going to be day 30, it's only 29, so it's Rosh Chodesh Kislev. And if it's going, which is going to be Aleph, and if it's going to be that he was born on the 29th, right, which means that it was only 29 days, and now there's going to be 30 days, so therefore it's going to be on, it's a machloket over here. Some people say it's going to be the 30th of Cheshvan, and some people say, right, not. So let's see the footnote, 335. 335, no. 335, when a month is 30 days long, the 30th day and the day following it are both celebrated in Rosh Rosh Chodesh. Thus, if Cheshvan is going to be 30 days long, the 30th of Cheshvan and... Well, the first of Kislev are celebrated as Rosh Chodesh Kislev. If Cheshvan is 29 days long, only the day of the first of Kislev is celebrated as Rosh Chodesh. 336 was that we do not say that since he was born on the last day of Kislev, he becomes a Mitzvah on the last day before Kislev. Even if it's only going to be 29 days of Cheshvan, right, 13 years old, right? We're actually going to say that as he was born on the day of, after 29th of Cheshvan, he becomes a Mitzvah on the day after 29th of Cheshvan, even though that happens to be on the first of Kislev. 337 says, the first opinion is the Bach, right? As brought down in the Mishnah Bura and the Kafa Chaim, okay? And Rav Mayim Mazuz, however, ruled that the boy becomes Bar Mitzvah only in the first of Kislev, since he was born on that day. We do not say that since he was born on the, tw- on the day after 29th of Cheshvan, he necessarily becomes Bar Mitzvah on the day of the, after 29th of Cheshvan. Halakha Bura also challenged the validity of the ruling of the Bach, and therefore he also ruled the same thing. So you have a machloki between Rav Mazuz and Halakha Bura, when does this boy become Bar Mitzvah? Do you say it's going to be on that first day or not? Halakha 28 says Anonen, right? One second. Anonen cannot be counted as a member of a Minyan. If he contacted the Chavra Kadisha and they take responsibility for the funeral, then he can be counted as a member of the Minyan. Also, he counts as a member of the Minyan on Shabbat because obviously there's no Aninut on Shabbat. After the funeral, though, he has the status of a Navel, not of an Onen, and he counts as a member of the Minyan for Bikad Amazon and for the prayers. 29, the last halacha, someone who's been excommunicated by Bedin cannot count as a member of a Minyan. Okay, if the, why? He's put in Nidui, excommunicated. If the basis of the excommunication is that he has transgressed as an Avira, if he was excommunicated because of his abstinence regarding a monetary dispute, he can count as a member of a minyan. Likewise, if it was a Torah scholar excommunicated because he acted with dis- disrespect for a Torah scholar, he still counts as a member of a minyan. Okay, but why? Because it wasn't done by a bedin that it was going to be done for something. So even when someone was excommunicated because he's guilty of sins and it cannot be counted as a member of a minyan, others may pray in the synagogue in his presence and form a minyan without counting him. Everyone must remain at a distance of Dalet Amot from the person. And if the Betin is communicating him expressly that he may not pray together with the congregation in the synagogue, then the congregation may not conduct the prayers at all while he's present. That means they must have to throw him out. I'm just going to do the footnotes and then we're done. 338. Re- regarding the Megillah reading, the Mishnah Bura cited the pre Megadim, stating that it's possible that such a person can count as a member of a Minyan for the sake of a re- reading of the Megillah. His reasoning is that since the purpose of having 10 people for the Megillah is Persum and Isa, uh, that's it. That's all you need. You don't need them to be united. There's Pisu Menisa. Regarding the Tefilot that require a Minyan there, though, the, uh, though, that's going to be a problem because there you don't have a Minyan because he's excommunicated. What about someone who's, who has been excommunicated? Right? So he says, the Kavachim Sufer added that a person who has been excommunicated by Bedin cannot join others for Zimun, as is brought down Shukhan Ru. This does not contradict this ruling here since the person cannot count as 10, he cannot count as 3 either. But the subject discussed here is a Minyan of 10 people. 
340 just says it's a Ben Ishchai rule that someone who's been excommunicated cannot be counted as a member of a minyan. He did not distinguish between someone who had sinned or someone that's in a monetary dispute. Although the Shulchan Ruch made no distinction either, the reader is expected to, expected to examine the later authorities. The Ben Ishchai, however, should have explained the matter in more detail. Okay, he's just saying that the Ben Ishchai didn't mention it, but technically there is going to be a difference between money and not money. The last footnote, 341, the Bet Yosef uh, cited response of the Rivash. Right, that someone who refused to pray with his congregation, an individual who had been excommunicated by Bedin, was present. So imagine you come into the Bet Knesset, there's somebody that's put in. So the Rivash was basically saying that imagine you come to the Bet Knesset and there's a guy that is uh, excommunicated. So if he's excommunicated, why in the world are you going to come? You're going to actually, uh, to call the, you want to pray there. You don't want to pray there. So he said that this person was being overly zealous. What does that mean? That means basically, okay, fine, you're not going to count on the Minyan, but you don't have to leave. No, you just leave him in the corner there. The extent of the communication was the person could not be counted as a minyan, but, and everyone has to uh, stay daladamot from him, but it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to pray in the same room. Well, let him pray there. What's the big deal? The Talmud never included such a restriction as the fact of the excommunication. Nevertheless, the Bedin chose to be more stringent with a particular sinner and added a basic rule of communication, so they have the authority to do so, right? And in this case, however, that was not what the Bedin actually did.